Hey, I've got the Loops computer up in front of me. I want to talk through Ableton for just a couple minutes. So on the desktop, you'll notice two files. One's called Eastview Live WC and the other's called Eastview Live 5 p.m. You're almost always going to want to use the WC file. That gets changed every week to be that Sunday's um, Ableton set. And I've got one on the bottom there for the 5 p.m. only if the service plan is altered for the 5 p.m., which we only do a couple times a year. So you're going to double click this file and um, Ableton will open. Um, I've got it minimized right now, so I, um, I'm just gonna pull that open. First thing you need to know is that each um, song corresponds to a, um, a number on the keypad. So song one, you can see one there, and then there's this little orange um, dot. So if I hit two, that's gonna jump over to there, and then three, and then four. So that's how you'll choose a song. Um, I'm going to go back and start song number one. So I'm going to hit one, which will call it up, and then space bar will be my start and also my stop button. Keys, two, three, four. Okay, and I'm going to stop it with space bar again. So at the top of a service, you'll hear us, our sound guys giving us updates on time, maybe one minute left, 30 seconds. They'll, they'll usually do a 10 second countdown and we'll usually start the loops with about two or three seconds left on the countdown. So they'll say five, four, three, two, key, two, three, four. And then we're off and running. Um, next thing you need to know is um, how songs transition, whether they flow into the next song automatically or whether there's a stop and you'll have to do it manually. So anytime we have a set of two or three or four songs that are together without any speaking elements between them, they'll automatically transition. So I'm going to let you hear what that would sound like. And you'll notice visually, sorry, I zoomed in here. You'll notice visually that there's not this orange stop marker between these two songs, meaning that they're going to flow between them. So here's what that will sound like. All right, so what I don't want you to do is this. <laughs> if you stop it after the song and then cue up the next song on it, space bar again, it'll interrupt the transition and it will sound like this. <laughs> or something kind of like that. Or if you hit or if you hit two between them. Let's see you do this. And you're like, help go two. Uh, anyways. Intro. If there's a transition already built in, just simply just let it go in service. Now in rehearsal, if you want to stop it because your worship leader tells you to, that's totally fine. All right. Um, and then at the end of songs two, three, and four on this particular set, you'll notice that little orange clip, and that will stop playback. So here's what that will be like. Um, and in rehearsal, this doesn't matter, but in service, it really does. So um, let's say we get to the end of the song. And... <laughs> Now, when this playhead hits this stop marker, this green play icon here will turn black, meaning playback has stopped. Then, and only then, um, are you free to cue up the next song. So when that's stopped, maybe now we're in like a welcome or a communion or offering time or something, and maybe we have a song next, whether it's after the element or after the sermon or something. So now we can cue up song number three, and it'll jump to that. And then when, uh, whenever you're ready to start that song, just hit the space bar. Intro. Two, three, four. All right. So in this service, you can see we've got two songs that are together, and then we're going to stop, and then we've got another song, and then we're going to stop, and then another song, and then we're going to stop. So I think it's something like two song set, we've got a, um, a welcome, and then another song, and then we're going to stop, and we've got a sermon, and then we've got a song after the sermon, and then that's our last song for the day. All right, last thing you need to know, um, and this is really only important for uh, band rehearsal, but sometimes the worship leader will want to start mid-song, like if we run or just run one section or kind of like run a transition between songs. So let's say your worship leader asks you to start um, on open the gates on the maybe like the outro of the song. So we need to zoom in if, if, if it's not already zoomed in. We'll do this by taking our mouse cursor and putting it up here, and the cursor will turn to this little... You'll notice the circle thing appears. Now what we can do is 
we're gonna click and hold and then do a little swipe. And this will happen, it'll zoom in. So I'm gonna zoom in as much as I need. Generally, we just zoom in the amount of about, about one song so we can see the entirety of it and see all the cues. So let's say he asks you to start the outro. So I can see this O-U-T-Q. If you just click that and um, uh, hit spacebar, it'll start exactly two bars before the outro, which is exactly what you want. So I'm gonna click that icon, just single click is all you need to do. Hit spacebar. So that's how you start mid-song. Um, if you want to swipe around so you can like stay zoomed in but see the next song, um, first of all, like queuing up the songs will automatically make it jump there. But if you just want to like swipe around on your own, you can do that by just doing a two-finger swipe, similar to what you do like on an iPad, and then that'll move around. To zoom out, you're gonna uh, basically do the opposite of what you did when you zoomed in. You can either uh, well, never mind. Just get your cursor up here where it's circle again, and then now just double click. And then that zoomed you out so you can see all four songs again. There's one thing uh, I get asked about pretty commonly. Sometimes if a clip or a cue gets double clicked, this orange thing will pop up, or this uh, bottom thing will pop up on the bottom. And it's not bad, but it just eats up some of your screen space. And a lot of guys, uh, they don't like that. So what we can do to get rid of that is, uh, again, if you go down here, the mouse cursor changes to this thing. So then we're gonna just click and hold and then kind of like pull it down while we stay held with our mouse. And then that gets rid of it. Think that's all you need to know? Best of luck.